This is a flipped lesson about important terminology for our fourth unit, Conflict and Conflict Resolution, featuring Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Follow along with your note sheet and fill it out as you go. The first significant term to know is tragedy. A tragedy is a play that depicts tragic events that has an unhappy ending and has to do with the downfall of a main character. You might recognize these Greek theater masks depicting both tragedy and comedy. Homartia is a tragic flaw. This is a fault in the protagonist that leads to the downfall of that character. This could include flaws such as hubris or too much pride or poor judgment. Irony is a figure of speech which shows a contradiction between what is expected and what actually occurs. There are three types of irony, including dramatic irony, verbal irony, and situational irony. Verbal irony is the use of words to mean something different than what the character is intending to say, such as in Mean Girls when Regina gives a backhanded compliment. Situational irony occurs when the exact opposite of what is meant to happen happens, such as in this example. When you break a date with your girlfriend so you can go to the ball game with the guys. When you go to the concession stand, you run into your date who is with another guy. Dramatic irony occurs when the audience knows something that the characters do not know, such as in horror movies or in the show Punked. An aside is a remark made to the audience by a character during a play. This occurs in movies like Ferris Bueller's Day Off when Ferris talks to the audience while playing hooky one day and staying home from school to go to, on an adventure in New York City with his friends. A soliloquy is when a character talks about his or her own thoughts and feelings to the audience without necessarily addressing any other characters, or any characters at all. A monologue is a speech presented by a single character in which they express their thoughts aloud, addressing other characters or the audience. These two terms seemed pretty similar to me, so I decided to look up the difference between the two. Monologue means in the company of other characters, while soliloquy is totally alone. This one represents dialogue, which we already know. This is conversation between two or more people in a book, play, or movie. A character foil is a character that is used to contrast another character, to highlight certain qualities of that character, for example, Batman and Robin, or a character like Harry Potter and his foe, Voldemort. I added this one in because it's used in scene one, when Romeo is going on and on about being upset about this woman who won't be with him. An oxymoron is a figure of speech in which two words with opposing meanings are used together intentionally for effect, such as in this example, or when Romeo says, oh brawling love, oh loving hate, and then says, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health, all of these are oxymorons.
comic relief is some sort of humor added in to lessen the seriousness of the play. The nurse gives the audience comic relief many times throughout Romeo and Juliet. Also, there's this example from The Lion King. A pun is a form of wordplay or humor that depends on similarities in sounds or meanings between two words. A couplet is a pair of lines that rhyme. This is usually a part of a larger poem. Here are three cu couplets in a row. Blank verse is a type of poetry that does not rhyme and doesn't have any particular meter. Iambic pentameter is a type of meter. Shakespeare used it and it must have taken him forever. He literally went through each line of poetry and made sure that there were five stressed or unemphasized and five unstressed or unemphasized word parts in each line. This made characters sound as though their voices were more sing-songy and upbeat. This is an example of the difference between stressed and unstressed syllables. Allusions are references to people, places, events, or literary works in a piece of literature. I think the best way to explain this one is to watch Family Guy. All the characters are always alluding to other things when they say, this was like that time when we did this or that. This image is of Brian alluding to Snoopy from the Peanuts. An analogy is a comparison between two things on the basis of structure, purpose, or relationship. For example, shoe is to foot as tire is to wheel. Citizens are to president as the solar system is to the galaxy. Characterization is the description of characters in a work of literature. There are two types of characterization, direct characterization and indirect characterization. Direct is on the play or story, just tells the audience what the character is like by stating it with plain details and words. Indirect characterization allows us, the audience, to interpret details about the character for ourselves. When writing indirect characterization, writers will use the Steele method to describe characters. Steele stands for speech, thoughts, effect on others, actions, and looks. This is where you find out more information about characters. Diction is all about word choice. In the example below, the author decided to use certain words that impact the tone and feeling of the writing. Using words like bitter, rotten, and sickeningly enhance the writing. This next one stands for dr dramatic structure, which is the structure of a play. This chart represents the usual structure of a play. The protagonist is the main character, or the good person, in the story. The antagonist is working against the protagonist and is causing some sort of conflict. An example of a protagonist and antagonist would be Batman and the Joker. We should already know this one. Similes are comparison using like or as, such as in this example. Metaphors are comparisons in which two things are compared directly, like in this example. This one should also be familiar.
A sonnet is a 14-line lyric poem written with a complicated rhyme scheme. Shakespeare wrote many sonnets, and one that we have read so far is the prologue of Romeo and Juliet. Rhyme scheme is our last term, and it is the pattern of rhyme, usually the end rhyme of a poem. Letters represent each new rhyme in a poem. See the rhyme scheme in, the, in this example. Thanks for listening and viewing the video. Be ready to practice these words and eventually take an assessment on them during this unit.